All right, now the next few slides, they look different because they come from a drug company uh, that made Apoquil or makes Apoquil. But it allows me to, to, to branch just a little differently um, and talk about pruritus, itching. Um, all the diseases that we deal with pruritus have inflammation as a component, but controlling that pruritus can be a nightmare. One of the problems you'll be faced with uh, is the itchy dog, the dog with atopy, the dog with food allergies, and getting control of those historically has been really, really frustrating. A lot of them, you could do a lot of good uh, with uh, dietary changes if it was food allergy, desensitization if you tested them. Uh, both are still good practices. Um, but some we had to resort to glucocorticoids, steroids to control, particularly atopy uh, and flea allergies. But <laughs> long-term glucocorticoids, we tried alternate day therapy to minimize the effect, but we still have systemic effects. So finding something that would control the itch without all the deleterious side effects of a steroid uh, has been uh, looked for and wanted a long, long time. So this is about Apoquel and the following Katie uh, slide. Um, they're making the point that cytokines can trigger and perpetuate clinical signs of itching, scratching, and inflammation. And in the skin, you've got all these interleukins that are involved in that. <clears throat> and what's happening is you get your cytokine that's going to bind to specific receptors in the uh, pathway in the cell membrane. And one of those uh, receptors has a common pathway called Janus kinase, or the JAK uh, pathway. <laughs> and when the cytokine, particularly I think it's 13 and 31, you don't have to know that, but when they bind to the receptor, the Janus kinase uh, activates, uh, phosphorylates this particular substance, STAT over here, signal transducer and activator of transcription, which goes down into your, uh, into your nucleus, binds to the DNA, creates a messenger uh, RNA, and you get a, um, a protein that causes all these bad things. All right, so this cytokine stimulates the nucleus to produce all these things we don't want in an allergy. So if we can block Janus uh, kinase, we inhibit this part right here. That's exactly what Apoquel does. It's a Janus kinase inhibitor. It's approved orally for paritis in dogs, being used extra-labelly in cats with some success. Uh, rapid onset, more rapid than steroids, all right, and can be used long term. This has been, for some people, a godsend. Uh, this is, is really almost a, a um, miracle drug for some of these um, atopic dogs. Dogs that we couldn't control or we could only control with steroids can be controlled uh, with Apoquel, which is the oxytonib. Okay. And the great thing is well tolerated. The main side effect is GI and it's still only 2.3%. And probably part of the reason you think about where we're working, we're working way down in the cascade, not at the beginning. All right. So, you know, the steroids are so effective because they occur early, but they also have a lot of side effects for that reason. This is occurring inside the nucleus of the cell, so not very many other things are affected. So it has a much better safety profile, much wider therapeutic index than a lot of the other things we have. <coughs> so uh, really good, good drug for itchy dogs. Uh, this is from the label because it's an immunomodulating agent. Uh, they be, be more susceptible to infection, edematicosis, and neoplasia. There are few concerns whether they might activate uh, uh, 
neoplasia, especially if there's a history, and don't use it in dogs that have active demodex because of the immunosuppressant effect. Um, some during the clinical trial broke with demodex while they were receiving the, um, the um, Apoquil. All right, but overall, uh, a really wonderful, perhaps game-changing drug for uh, pruritus. <laughs> kind of related is KD, and I'm just naming that because it's C-A-D-I, um, canine atopic dermatitis immunotherapy. Um, KD sounds a little easier to, to roll off my tongue. All right, now it, it also acts as your interleukin, but it's a, mo a monoclonal antibody that specifically binds interleukin 31. So we just take it out, and there is no interleukin to stimulate the Janus kinase um, pathway. Uh, it's given as a once monthly subcutaneous injection. Again, rapid onset, similar to PRED and Apoquil, which is uh, in its ability to reduce pruritus um, improvement within seven uh, days in the lesions, well tolerated, no immunosuppression. Since it's a protein, it's taken out by a catabolic means. You don't have to worry about liver or kidney failure. Uh, Dr. Gunner says she likes it, but it's more expensive than Apoquel and requires injection. So she's used it on a few animals and really likes it. It seems effective, but more commonly she used Apoquel. One thing to point out on Apoquel, and I wouldn't doubt it on this, there are certain allergies that are not steroid responsive, or I should say certain cases of pruritus that are not steroid responsive. For reasons we don't know, food allergies don't respond to steroids very well, okay? Neither does sarcoptic mange, all right? You have a dog with sarcoptic mange, you put him on steroids, he's still gonna itch most of the time. You might suppress it somewhat. Food allergies, again, they're going to itch. Um, Apoquel works uh, on the non-steroid responsive. Basically, if it's itchy, it seems to work, regardless of the underlying uh, disease. Okay. All right, so these are two new antipyritic drugs that you'll be glad you have. Um, You'll, you'll use a lot of them, particularly the Apoquel. Yeah, question. Uh, with Apoquel, you know, backwards, should Katie do cover it, or? Well, it, his, for the longest time, Apoquel was back ordered. The last I heard is it, it's, <coughs> they've increased production, and it's pretty readily available now. Anything else? Yes. Sorry. Like, I'm not saying this the best thing to do, but where I used to work, we had a lot of people come in, like once a year, and they would get a their dogs would get HD or their dog would be in summer, and they would get a steroid injection. Now, for those kind of dogs that don't have like, a constant thoracic problem, would you still want to use like some type of drug like this, or do you kind of... All right, your, your question was for the, the animal slash owner that comes in that their dog has a seasonal allergy, and they get a steroid shot. Right, the steroid shot is usually Depamedrol or uh, Vetalog. It's a repository steroid, typically lasts two to four weeks. Um, I am not a big fan of repository steroids. We see a lot of problems with them. They're immunosuppressed. The biggest problem, though, with these, from my standpoint, in the dog. Now, in the cat, I will use them. The cat is more tolerant of repository steroids, but my biggest problem in the dog is they tend to be used inappropriately. Instead of getting the single injection, realize this is only going to last a month at most, six weeks, maybe, I doubt it, but typically no more than two to four weeks. So a lot of owners are back because not many seasonal allergies last only a month. So they're given two, three, four injections. And that's where I have a problem. Is It's really, really easy to make an atrogenic cushionoid dog with repository steroids. This would be way, way better, but it's also way more expensive. So that's the battle you're gonna fight, all right? 
for if they're going to use a steroid instead of Apoquil, I would try to get them on alternate day oral for that duration rather than keep bringing them back for their Depomedrol injection. Okay. Now, 